All right, if you saw my previous video on the Kepler R done right, um, this is my Kepler X. Uh, I approached the same idea from a different angle, and I ended up with this ship, which is kind of my favorite role play ship. Um, it's another Stroud Eklund, it's the most expensive ship I've ever built. Um, it's become something that I, I really like for my character. So uh, I approached this one. What I did was I bought one of the Stroud Eklund Vanquisher 3s. And I just stretched it and upgraded everything. And um, you'll see those nose cones. They look just like a Vanquisher 3. You know, all, the, all the various parts. Um, it's just a Vanquisher 3 that was stretched and relayed out. And it's now one of my, my favorite layouts for a ship. So this is basically supposed to be the same idea as the Kepler R, it's all Stroud Eklund ship. It has one part on it that's not purchased at Stroud Eklund, and that is this Hope Tech landing bay. Uh, it is definitely possible to make this uh, Stroud Eklund only. Um, the only thing you would need to do is take one of these landing gear, move it to the center, and put a Stroud Eklund landing bay there. Uh, but then you'd have to walk all the way around the ship to enter, which I don't like. So I figure um, just having this one Hope Tech part on the ship uh, just makes it work better for me. I decided to allow that, that one piece. Otherwise, it is 100% Stroud Eklund. Alright, let's look inside first. You enter. Almost everything is right here on the main level. Everything comes off of the central point. To the front we have the command area. So we've got the bow stations. We've got the captain's quarters over here. Why is everyone in the captain's quarters? We've got the bridge up here. We have our workshop and our armory. So that's all the command up front. Then up here we have main engineering. This is where our dock docking hatch goes. We got a computer core. And we got 3x1 engineering. And this actually makes a lot of sense because directly beneath this is the fuel tanks. Directly beneath this is the grav drive. And directly beneath this is the reactor. And of course this is all the machinery to run them. We have our mess hall. To this side of the ship we have basically the science area. We've got our infirmary. We have a computer core. We have a science lab. So this is all the science stuff. Computers to crunch the data. Extra storage. Infirmary if anybody's hurt. Down here we have the cargo bays. This is a 2x2 two two cargo bay, a 3x2 cargo bay. This is the only cargo bay I know of that actually has access to the cargo bay in it. So you can actually access your cargo from here. I believe this is the only cargo bay that has that. Of course, we've got more extra storage, lots of that. And then a little closet off the back. So I basically turned this into a 5x2 cargo bay plus one, one by one. Again, more extra storage. And you don't have to come down here unless you're really role-playing. This is the cargo area of the ship. It really feels like a cargo area of the ship. It fits in here. Tons of storage space. And over here we get the living area of the ship. 
two by two living area, the two by one, it's an all in one A. Over here, two by one, all in one A. And we drop down in here. You've got three two by ones. So I've got a living quarters in the middle. I don't like people having to walk through other people's bedrooms to get somewhere, but uh, with this, it just kind of made sense. So we got another 2x1A over here, another 2x1B over here. So this is all the passenger area. Again, you don't have to use this ladder, this is for your passengers, just extra space for them place for the crew to hang out. And that is the interior. Okay, so a lot of the stuff is pretty much the same as my Kepler R done right. Uh, it's got slightly less cargo. Uh, one more passenger, it says 16 passengers instead of 15. It says, well, if I'm on board, it's 11,000 versus 12,000 for the Kepler R done right. Everything else is pretty much the same. Same weaponry, same shield, um, same most everything. It's got slightly higher hull, uh, just slightly. Still maintains 100 mobility, same top speed, same crew. Uh, can the base cargo 7,010? I think the other one was 7,450, 7,480. I think because the Kepler R done right. So it's on three levels, but almost everything that is on the main level. So you only have to go, you know, up into main gen engineering if you want to, or down into the cargo area if you want to or down to living area if you want to. You do have to go up into the bridge, but it doesn't bother me. Alright, let's tear it down. Look at all the pieces. Alright, here we have it in three levels. Bottom level, we got these nose caps. A and the 2B, another 2B, another A. We've got five of these Aculander 11 landing gear on each side and one in the center. We've got the all-in-one berth 2x1A, living quarters 2x1, and all-in-one B on this side. We've got the 2x2 cargo hull, 3x2 cargo hull, and a one by one companion way over here. We've got the Hope Tech landing bay. Uh, this allows you to enter in on the main level, so you spend most of your time on the main level. Again, this can easily be, be taken out. You just move one of these landing gear to the center and put a Stradeckland bay in here, but then you're entering in through the cargo hull. Or I guess you could have it enter in through the living quarters if you wanted. Um, I think with the look of the ship and everything, I think the Hope Tech landing bay, yeah. I think it's worth taking one piece that's not Strad Eklund. Right, then we have our main level. We've got the Strad braking engine, two of those, and one nose cap. This is straight off the uh, Vanquisher 3. We've got nose cap C on each side. Up here we got the armory, workshop, battle stations, two by two, and captain's quarters. Over here we've got the two by two living quarters with an all in one A, another all in one A. We've got S202 cargo hold and a Stroud cap B starboard aft. So we've got two of those. Two of these cargo holds. Uh, oh yeah, and there's one, two, three, four, 
five more of them uh, on the bottom level. So there's seven of the S202 cargo holds. Um, and over here we have the science side off of the you know, mess hall which connects everything together. So we've got the 2x2 computer core off the got the infirmary and the science lab um, also attached under here we have the two fuel tanks uh, this seems to be the combination that gives the best um, fuel to weight ratio for what I'm doing so I use the same thing on the uh, Kepler R done right Then on the top level, over here we've got Stroud Cap A, two of those, th Cowling 3s, two of those, an aft Cap A, and an engine mount. We've got that same thing reversed on the other side. Uh, mounted to these weapons points, we've got the Obliterator Alpha Turrets, PBO 300 Alpha Turrets, and the um, Auto Alpha Beams. Uh, this exact same weaponry I had on the uh, Kepler R done right. Uh, yeah, these don't all want to connect together. Um, putting these over here it covers this little gap here. I couldn't get anything really in there. Um, if I tried to put something in here, it would completely screw up the door placement and everything, so uh, these things nicely cover it. And it keeps the weight down for something so massive. Then we've got the Contiki B500 bridge. It's got two more of the auto alpha beams on it. We've got our slim docker and our assurance sh shield, the best shield, on top of our computer core, and then our 3x1 engineering bay. And that snaps nicely right over top of that. Of course, it's telling me I have three errors. I'm sure it, it doesn't like to. Yeah, things don't like to connect. That's okay. So that is my Kepler X. And you see, with me on board, it's got over 11,000 cargo. It's got everything you need. I basically think of it as my mobile outpost. It's an expensive ship, but it's worth it. All right, so that was my Kepler X variant of the uh, Kepler R done right. Uh, next video, I think I'll be going into my Honey Badger 2. This is a fun little thing.